I was watching something um, from I think it's a Chinese channel and I saw them do like a brain surgery so I asked my husband I said do you think they can do a brain surgery and give my baby a new brain because if she has a new brain then she'll be fine you know and he said he said um do you want to test it do you know what it means to open the skull of this child? It's 50-50. Is it not the pain should go through? What if it doesn't work? Okay, then whose brain are you going to take from? Because when you when you wish that you have a brain of a child of this age, then that means you're wishing that another child of this age goes down so that this your baby can be well. So I feel like that's a little selfish. Hi everyone. So um Today, I just um, led and I felt like um, it is time we come up on social media, which happens to be like um, our office where we work, um, to talk about something very important in our lives. Um, over the years, I mean, for the past um, three, four, five, six years, we've had a lot of people trolling, you know, my wife and I, that um, we have not been posting our only daughter online, posting our only daughter, our child, um, our first child. And so, um, not as if we shied away from it, but we felt like it wasn't too necessary at some point. But I think because we do a lot of family content, and so we show our kids online all the time. So um, people really, really, really want to know why are we not showing our only daughter who happens to be our first child. So today, we just want to come out and probably clear the air and then um, clear the doubts of these people who have um, been mocking us and trailing us. Of course, you know, as I was discussing with my wife, I simply say, uh, I told her that um, we just let them know that um, we shouldn't even mock um, the pains you do not understand because, I mean, as parents, we have some pains that has been quite very, very excruciating, but decided to keep it aside and just move on with life. So I'm going to tell you about our only daughter and why we've not been posting her. Should I go ahead? Yeah, please. All right. So um, in, of course, in 2015 was when we got married. And um, in 2016, um, my wife, um, delivered of a baby girl. Her name is Eke um, Aya, Aya. All right, so... Um, the 19th of October. 19th of October, 2016. 2016, yeah. So, um, now that night was one of the most horrible nights in our life. Like, very, very horrible night. I think on the 16th, I'm um, sorry, on the 17th, um, 18 was when you started, the labor started. Yeah, on the um, 18. It was the day before. It was a very, it was like the early hours of the day. Mm. Early hours of um, the oh, 19th. 19th. Yeah, okay, it was the, the early hours oh, of the 19th. Yeah. Okay. That was when the labor started. In the morning. You know, and we had a good progression of labor. Mm according to the medical teams that checked us. And of course, during the antenatal and the checkup from the doctors, everything was fine. The, even the placenta position, the water in the, you know, they just, everything was fine, basically, up until the time for delivery, you know, and I think at some point in the hospital, of course, when the public hospital, government hospital, mm and at some point when i was going through my pain it was like um i think it was like a one well, it was not a medical personnel that checked me at some point i feel like the nurses everybody just went to go and rest and the person i saw that was trying to clean the room so i just assumed that might be a cleaner or something that was now checking me at some point you know but um i had progressed greatly and then the doctor came out like okay in the next few 
a minute or so, not up to an hour, you're going to have to start entering to push up, you know, so that was the plan. And by the time it was time to push, we had some issues, you know, and the baby's head would be coming out and somehow it would slide back in. I don't know, the, the nurses were like shouting and at some point they were like, that I should, I should not allow the baby. They were acting as if maybe I was the one that was sucking the baby back inside of my body, you know, and or pushing the baby back. But the baby's head would crown, would be like push, 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 you know, that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, the baby came out, the baby was stressed, and the baby was not crying or breathing, not crying, let's say not crying. Mm, I think from yeah, that point, breathing. from that point, um, let me share my experience. You know, yeah. I, 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 at least I saw some things happening okay. inside there. Okay. So I don't know when they called you. Okay. But from my own point of view, yeah. the inside of the place, baby came out. They now, you know, you know how they try to tap the baby. They now say, okay, oxygen, bring the oxygen, just casually, you know. So you think that, okay, there's oxygen in the room. So they brought one container. So they carry that container and press straight to the baby's nose, pop, 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 and they're like, it's empty. They say, this thing is empty. There's no oxygen here. Can you go bring oxygen? So that's where the whole drama started. So, um, so baby was brought out, you know, with um, an oxygen max with a cylinder. And of course, um, the cylinder was not producing oxygen, but rather, you know, some sort of water. So I had to unmax um, the baby and took my daughter into the car. Now the ambulance they brought, um, I think there was no fuel as at the time too. So I uh, were left with the, all the option to drive with the baby. So my mother-in-law stepped into the car and then we drove from General Hospital then to another hospital, the teaching hospital, you know, and then- So in other words, what this actually meant is that in the whole of the general, in the whole of the hospital, mm. there was no oxygen. No oxygen, yeah. So, so this is a baby that was gasping for air. For air already from um, from the labor room, and now has it no has oxygen. Has to be transported, still gasping. For about over um, five to ten minute distance, and they even get into teaching hospital again. We um, we have we have to start filling forms and buying cards and all of that and then the oxygen was still not in the building so yeah. they had to send someone to they had to say one of you people had to go yeah to outside of there down a little bit to get the oxygen because distance. i was there with my friends as well you know, you know, 